today we're going to focus on the mental part, which is even more important than the technique and the tactics, in my opinion, and the physical part, of course. So what are we going to do? We're going to give you practical advices, like assignments that you can focus on during friendly matches or real matches. And this will help you to get this killer mentality. Uh, because if you have it, you know, if your mental game is stronger than your opponent, you can win way more matches. So we're going to be very practical today. Exercises that you can do on the court, during matches, during the training. And we're going to start right now. Okay. I like it. You like it? Good match. Today we are recording in Pieks Paddle in Heemskerk, which is a very nice location, by the way. Super high roof. But first part is respond neutral. I've said this before in my other videos, but responding neutral is key. So what I want you to do is to play a match, friendly or real match, and to respond neutral when you make a mistake. Let's say you feel very tense before you're going to play a very big match. You can try to think away your physical problems that you get from being tense. So what could happen if, if I am tense is that I'm tightening my muscles. So what I would do is to be more active. So every time before the point, I'm going to jump around and to be extra loose. Because if I focus on being extra loose, the pressure or the tightness in my arm might go away and I actually play a better shot. So if you think all these problems away, if you focus on something else, you will actually perform better. So if my arm is tight and I think about loose, my arm will actually become more loose. If the match is tense, I might be more tense in my entire body. So if you know it's a big point or you really want to win the point or you're losing or you don't feel like you're loose, I would highly recommend to maybe to hold the racket a little bit lower to be more here or to jump around before you hit or to make it loose. So every time you want to start the point, try to be very loose and then you're ready. So if I am going to be like this or here I'm, I'm loose, Maybe it's the other side, so maybe you're too loose. So what happens is after you won the first set, most of the time your heart rate drops down. So you may be too relaxed. You're more like this. So then you might want to be a little bit more tense to, to get this perfect range between loose and tense. So first is recognizing the fact that you find it hard or that there is some pressure. And then second, to do something about it, be more loose or blah, do something. It will help a lot. Tip number two is hold your racket in the other hand. So after you miss the shot or after, if you feel angry, you're probably going to do that. You don't want to do that. So if your arms tense, give your arm some space and let it hang for instance, or hold your racket in your other hand or hold it very loose, like something, to just avoid being too tense. So if you do something instead of responding to the actual, ah, I lost a point, ah, then you will not get us so upset. Tip number three is create a ritual. So if you do a ritual, like bouncing the ball before you're about to surf, it will help you to focus on what you're doing. So first, you're going to make a decision where you're going to play the ball, and then you do a ritual. You don't have to be like Nadal doing this and everything, because it's a little bit too much. But if you create a ritual, like every time I'm returning, I'm bouncing, or every time I'm returning, I'm doing a high five to my partner and I get back, or I touch the, the, the glass, think about something, let me know, by the way, what your ritual is, if it's really bad. A ritual will make your body ready for battle, so you need it. And it will also clear your mind, because you might have too many thoughts in your mind. Sticking to a ritual will help you to be more zen. 
Tip number four is... <laughs> don't get distracted. I nearly forgot my line because I was distracted. But there are a lot of distractions out there if you're playing a match. A tournament, maybe somebody shouting at you. Hup, Sven, hup, Sven, goed bra. And that will distract you from the actual match. So what you should do is focus on the game plan or talk a little bit with your partner. So the moment you start to realize that you're losing or that you're not inside the court with your focus or that you think, oh, today my mother is going to watch my match and I want to show that I am really good in paddle. These are all distractions that you don't need. You're not gonna play better with those distractions. So get your mind inside the court and it's not like that you cannot think of something not to do because it's impossible to don't think about a pink elephant. Don't think about a pink elephant. You will think about a pink elephant. So I'm going to tell you what you should do and just to focus on, oh, I'm gonna play to the right player. Oh, I'm gonna play to the fat guy over there. Tip number five, breathe. Welcome to the first episode in Get Zen with Sven. No, um, breathing is very important. You don't have to do this Buddha stuff, but a lot of people, they breathe through the mouth and this will increase your stress level. So what you should do is to try to get to nose breathing as soon as possible when you're playing the match, especially when it's tense, you want to breathe through your nose and you should aim for four seconds in six seconds out if possible to reduce the stress levels so you actually will feel much better and more relaxed when you breathe better and it's also something that you can focus on during the match uh, between the points so what happens a lot is that people say don't think about that well that's impossible so what I want you to do is to think of something instead of what you should not think of. And the breathing is a very good exercise to do if you feel stressed or that you, you played a very long rally and you should just wait until your heart rate is back to normal to have enough breath and then play the point because you have 20 seconds to start the next point. So take it if it's a tough rally. Tip number six is find a good partner. Because if your partner is like negative or complaining, then it just not helps. You need to create an environment where people support you and where they're positive. So I rather play with somebody that is just not my level, but very positive because it, I will enjoy it more and I will just play better. So, so sometimes you just need to get rid of that partner. He might or she might play amazing, but if she or he is not positive, change you should enjoy paddle no stress okay we're gonna do a seven now seven so that means remind your partner of the plan you understand funny joke eh? if you tell your partner what the plan is your partner will know what's up and it also helps you to have your mind more focused on the game Every single point you sometimes drift away with your mind and that's okay because you're playing maybe a match that is two hours or one hour and a half so you should not expect that you're in the zone for one hour and a half completely focused. If you're gonna watch a movie and some part is boring my mind is gone. Paddle is of course different because it's way more fun than a movie but it just happens that your mind wanders off and this is fine. You just have to recognize the fact that your mind wanders off. So every single time you start to point, remind your partner of the plan. Or every time you feel like you drift away or you see that your partner is like, oh, beautiful roof here. You just want them to know what's up. Or, okay, let's try to focus on playing softer. Okay, I'm gonna get a lob or say something about the match. Um, because it just helps you to be in the playing mindset and not in the I am inside my head mindset.
Tip number eight, stop comparing. Oh, <laughs> I made that shot. And this is what happens that if you do it again, ah, I just was able to do it. Or yesterday I was able to make that shot. This is what you tell, what people tell a lot to themselves during the match. You don't want to compare your own match depending on your previous match or like in the training you were able to do the smash and now the smash is not working. You should never compare, never. So why am I telling you to stop comparing? Well, it is something that is not in the right mindset and it's something that you can recognize because if you feel like you're in comparison mode, then you know, oh, I should switch. So you should recognize the fact that you're comparing and then you can change. So how can you change? Play the cards that you have today. So let's say my smash does not work today. Maybe you should play another shot that is working. So you don't want to hang on one side like my smash is my best shot. I can always do it, but now it's not working. Change. So play more Vibras, play a Bandeja, play soft to the fence, play a fake smash. So change. Yep. And then you will win all of your matches. Tip number nine is play the flow. The momentum flow is one of the most important things if you want to be mentally tough. If you can recognize that you're in the flow or you're not in the flow, you're in the dip, and you can play on that. So you can play on the flow. So what I would highly recommend is after you made an amazing shot or you play well, and you're playing your hoo -hoo, play points faster. Take less time. If you're losing and your opponent plays a wonderful shot, you want to break the pattern. You want to untie your shoelaces. You want to waste time. You have 20 seconds. So it's still okay to do it. It's not weird. If you feel like you're losing the match, take more time. One of the worst ever mistakes is that if I, if it's 3-0 and I'm just gonna change straight away. If I'm losing 3-0, I'm gonna be on the bench for at least one minute because I have that minute. I want to break the pattern. If my opponent kicks out of the ball, amazing shot, I'm gonna talk to my partner. Maybe I say to him, listen, you know, uh, two goats walk into a bar, one of them says, uh, hey, I'm Roger, strange. But it's important to break the pattern. Sometimes I just make a joke to my, uh, th this was not a joke by the way, but sometimes I just make a joke or I talk to them or I just waste time or I get the third ball and I highly, highly recommend to play paddle like this. Waste time, take more time when you feel tired or when you're losing and play the game faster when you are winning. So if I'm winning and I see my opponents are going up from the bench and they're going to play straight away, I'm gonna play. If I'm losing and I see them waiting on the court, I don't care. I have 60 seconds, so why should I not take the 60 seconds? I am here to win the game. I'm not here to be the nicest guy in the world. Please let us know in the comments below what tip helped you the most. And uh, thank you everybody for watching. And I'll see you in the next Monday episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.